I'm going to take both cars with exactly the same mass. I'm going to line them up at the edge of the tracks and I'm going to push them towards each other with equal forces. So what I want you to pay attention to is what's happening to these cars before they crash and what's happening to them after they crash. So here we go on three, two, one, go. Okay, so um, let's break this down. Before the crash, so object one, remember we said is our yellow car. And we also know that its momentum, or P1, is mass times velocity. So I can substitute an M times a V for the yellow car's momentum. And then if we look at the other car, which is the blue one, it had the same mass, it had the same velocity, but it was moving in the opposite direction. So that means its momentum was negative. We're gonna to define to the left as the negative direction. So we would say it had a negative mass times velocity. So remember, we have to add the uh, yellow car's momentum plus the blue car's momentum before the crash. So we basically just have this quantity minus itself. And so overall, the momentum before this crash was actually zero. On the after side of the equation, what did you see? One more time here. This time, the yellow car goes in the negative direction and the blue car went in the positive direction, which means if I look at the after side of the equation, here's my yellow car. It had a negative mass times velocity because it had negative momentum and the blue car had positive momentum because it went in the positive direction, which adds up to an overall momentum of, you guessed it, zero. So what does this show? Well, it proves this principle that momentum is conserved. Before the crash, there was an overall momentum of zero, and after the crash, there was still an overall momentum of zero. Momentum was neither created nor destroyed, it stayed the same.